Today, we're ranking all of the Grand Prix from the 2022 Formula 1 season on a tier list from best to worst. We're taking into account qualifying, sprints, and the race, just the Grand Prix weekend as a whole. Now, we did all of this over on my Twitch stream where the chat could get involved. And in the top right-hand corner of the screen, you'll be able to see a poll where they were able to rate what they thought the Grand Prix was from S through to D. All right, enough said. Let's get into it. So, first race of the season, Bahrain. Man, I really enjoyed this. I think no matter what happens for the first Grand Prix of the year, I think it's always going to be exciting. You know, even, even if it's an average race, it's just first time seeing cars back out on track. Who's going to be what? Who's going to be where? Um, and I think especially this year, with it being the new Rega cars, we got a very exciting Grand Prix. Qualifying was very tight. Um, you know, a good fight between Max, uh, Leclerc, and, and Sainz. Uh, and then in the race, you know, we got to see the new Rega cars, cars races against, against each other for the very first time. Um, and a lot of drama as well, you know, especially towards the end of the race with, with um, obviously, both Red Bulls breaking down, Hamilton staying away at podium, the Ferrari one too. But overall, just some good racing. That battle between Max and Leclerc was probably, other than Saudi Arabia, the best, one of the best battles of the year in terms of like championship uh, context. Like they literally went corner, multiple corners, multiple laps against each other. It was fucking exciting. So for me, I'm going to put in a great battles, great moments, great storylines, talking points. It was just a solid Grand Prix. So race number two of the season, Saudi Arabia. Again, another really good race. I love Jetta, man. Um, qualifying was 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 good. A lot of storylines to watch play out in front of us. Perez taking his first pole position in Formula 1. It was really, really exciting. Down in the race, uh, we had a good four-way battle between both Ferraris and both um, Red Bulls for the first portion of the race. Um, as the clear got close to Perez, Safety car came out, Perez dropped all the way back, which opened up the fight between Leclerc and Max. In that first half of the race as well, we saw a really nice midfield battle, specifically Ocon and Alonso fucking going at it. Then yeah, that Max and Leclerc battle for three laps again, it was so good. I, I know people find the DRS a little bit cheesy, but it was so exciting. After not having any battling f for years, um, to get multiple corner battles, for multiple laps was so exciting to watch. I personally loved it. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm going to have to give Saudi Arabia uh, an A as well. I think it was, um, I don't think it was as exciting as Bahrain purely because it wasn't the first race of the year. You know, that 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 first race of the year is always more exciting because it's like, what, 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 we, we don't know anything. We don't know, we don't know what's going to be like. Um, so yeah, for me, Saudi Arabia goes just a little bit behind Bahrain. Um, but it's still solid regardless. I'd still say the drama from, from Saudi Arabia was was uh, a little bit more uh, intense as well. We had a lot of drama as well. Again, I'm rating this as the Grand Prix as a whole. Yeah, starting off, two eights. Race number three of the season, Australia. Now, I was at the Australian Grand Prix, so my opinion on this Grand Prix is a little bit different than watching it at home. Now, I know it wasn't the best race in the world. It wasn't the best weekend in the world. Um, but for me personally, being at the track, the vibes... I got a bit of a different experience. I remember watching that race from the stands and it was non-stop action. I think that's what happens when you're at a race anyway. You see the cars flying past and then by the time you look up at the screen, more cars are flying past. But for me, I remember just really close battles. Like it wasn't a race that was very memorable, but it was, a, it was a, again, early on in the season, close racing. It was like, oh, is someone going to go for the overtake? You had Max breaking down. Um, we had Alonso fighting for pole position uh, on the Saturday. Um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a great Grand Prix, but at least for me being there, me personally, I'm going to have to put it in B, probably on the lower end of B, in a solid B. Race number four, Imola, uh, the Emilia Romana Grand Prix. It was a sprint weekend, and, um, you know, usually a sprint can negatively affect the Grand Prix. Most cases, it makes it better, and I think in this case, it did make the Grand Prix better. I think um, qualifying was a bit exciting in the, the damp conditions at the start, dry towards the end. It wasn't, it wasn't fantastic, but it was all right. Uh, the sprint was really good. Um, I think it was second best sprint of the year, from what I can remember. But yeah, it was good, you know, good battles. I'd almost say the sprint was better than the race, um, but unfortunately, the sprint kind of set up the race to be a bit predictable. But in the race, we know we, we had some good battles. The, the dry to wet conditions, the problem with Imola and a lot of races recently in Formula 1 is they start in damp conditions, they use the inter tire for 70% of the race, they wait for the tire to be worn down, they hop on the dry, and it's a pretty stale race. So there was that midpoint of Imola where it was quite boring. Uh, but the start was good, the end with the player chasing down Perez, throwing it away, uh, Lando getting the podium. It was a good race, you know? I think at the end of the day, there is going to be a lot of... Um, uh, kind of similar to last year, I think there is going to be a, 
uh, a lot of Grand Prix kind of on the upper side of this um, tier list. I don't think that's a bad thing, right? I think if we're voting these Grand Prix overall, like, like let's say we got all the last six years of Grand Prix and put them on a tier list. Yes, it would be, you know, they would. some would be a bit lower than they should be. Some should be higher. But we're just rating off of this season. And honestly, um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like for me, I'm going to put Emilor in B. Um, I think it was a good weekend. Um, man, it, it's hard to remember all of the Grand Prix this year, uh, even after watching the highlights. Um, mm, do I put it above or below Australia? Because I was at the Australian Grand Prix and I enjoyed Australia, but Emily was also good. Some of the drama, some of the battles. Um, mm, you know, what, I'm going to put it above Australia. I think Australia was good, but yeah, at the end of the day, Australia did lack a bit of overtaking a bit of battling and a bit of racing that that emila had um, even though i was there so yeah, i'm gonna put emila above australia for me so there we go all right miami first time we've had it in the sport um it was an interesting one usually we go to a new track and regardless of how bad the race is it's an exciting weekend but i just kind of i'm not a miami hater don't be wrong i i don't some people overreact way too much about miami i'm not a miami hater but I just felt like the weekend was just dull. Like there was only 90,000 people each day in the crowd, for which for an American Grand Prix, should, it should be way more than that. Um, the vibes were good, but the atmosphere wasn't that great. It felt a little bit cheesy, but most importantly, the track sucked. The, 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 it was so slippery. We never really got to see any good battling. And like we just saw in the highlights, there was just 30 laps of nothing. It just skipped from lap nine to lap 41. It was insane. Uh, they obviously got that late safety car because of the, the Gasly and, and Lando crash. Um, but after the safety car happened, the broadcast team focused the rest of the race on the Claire and Max. And unfortunately, the Claire wasn't able to battle Max at all. And the battles behind between like Lewis and, and George weren't shown on camera. And there's a few incidents here or there. But overall, this was a Grand Prix that left me just kind of very, I don't know, bored and very uninterested. I think it was one of the worst Grand Prix of the year. So I'm going to have to put it in, in D pretty easily. Yeah, it was, just, it was just a boring race, really. Let's just be real. It was just a boring race. All right. Spanish Grand Prix, sixth round of the season. This is a really, really good weekend. Um, qualifying uh, was fun to watch. You know, we, we didn't really know who was going to be on pole. Um, and then going into the race, a good kind of like battle between Leclerc and Max at the start or like them being close to each other at the start. Max and Sainz going off of the track. Lewis having his collision with Magnussen. So we had three big dogs at the back or, or you know, in the midfield of the grid, uh, in, in the mid pack, I should say. Then the Clay was pulling away on his own, and then all of a sudden, the tragic, the drama, his car broke down. Then it was anyone to play for. Was Perez gonna win? Was Russell even gonna win at one point? Was Max gonna come back through the field and win? And then, yeah, some great battles followed. Again, didn't really know who was gonna win until the last like 10 laps of the Grand Prix. We had some drama between Red Bull and uh, between Perez and Max, who was uh, who deserved the, the better strategy. We had a lot of problems of uh, Max Verstappen's car breaking down it was a good grand prix i enjoyed it um it was good battle good racing a lot of drama so for me i'm gonna have to put an a uh but the bottom end of a i don't think it was anywhere near the level of of bahrain and saudi arabia but for me that's a grand prix that is a grand prix that i like in formula one so monaco um now for me i really enjoyed this grand prix um first off qualifying fucking amazing um it wasn't the best monaco qualifying i've ever seen um but i just love seeing the cars go around there and seeing the pecking order um but i, I love seeing the cars go around at, at, at high speeds competing here you know just talking about the weekend as a whole i love the monaco grand prix just seeing cars in a location like that getting up close to the walls like i love watching practice i love watching qualifying it's so good it, it was one of those races where i think there's a lot of i think there's going to be a lot of discrepancy for where people vote this Grand Prix because some people have the mindset and this is fine you know there's people watch Formula 1 for different reasons right but some people have the mindset of there was no overtakes there was no chaos there was no action it's boring and then there's people with my perspective you know same with Martin Brundle you can hear him in the commentary saying the same thing is you know we got to see four drivers from two different teams nose to tail almost the entire race in wet conditions changing conditions dry conditions the entire race at Monaco going at it. We then had the strategy. We had the, the drama with the Ferrari fumbling the bag, Red Bull getting it right. We had the red flags, um, you know, and it's, it's at the end of the day, no, there is an overtakes, but it's still the, the intensity of waiting for overtake to happen, waiting for a crash to happen, waiting 
you know, not knowing who's going to win, not knowing what's going to happen. That is exciting, right? So for me, I'm going to have to put Monaco in A tier. Um, I am going to have to put it below. Oh, am I going to put it above? I know it's below Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, but do I think it was better than Spain? The level of driving was better at, at Monaco, but I think the Grand Prix was more enjoyable to watch at Spain. Um... Oh, this is tough. I think solely on the fact that we got a little bit blue balled with there being no overtaking, um, on track overtaking, I'm going to put it behind Spain. But these two are fucking neck and neck for me. I think these are two races that I think other people are going to rate lower, but I personally loved a lot because, it, again, it has everything that I like. All right, race number eight of the season, or Grand Prix number eight of the season, I should say. Azerbaijan. Now... Azerbaijan should be one of those Grand Prix street circuit chaos. It, it should be a top race, but for some reason in 2022, nothing really happened. Uh, qualifying, you know, we had Stroll throwing in a, in a funny, funny way. But other than that, Leclerc dominated qualifying. We then got into the race. Um, it was good. At the start, it was, it was looking hopeful. You know, um, Ferrari actually had some decent race pace at a track that we didn't expect them to have. Max got past the Claire pit under under VSC. His pace looked good. We were going to have a good Max and the Claire battle at the end, and then the Claire's engine blew up. And then there was just 30 laps of absolutely nothing. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm going to have to put an average. I just I can't remember anything and see. I, I can't remember anything that really happened in that race at all. Again, it wasn't as bad as Miami. We actually got a little bit of overtaking and and. Um, yeah, something to look forward to. Miami was just, you know, once once Verstappen got past, that, that race was over. So yeah, for me, Azerbaijan and C. Our first Grand Prix and C. Thank God. All right, race number nine, Canada. Uh, it was an interesting one. It was one of those Grand Prix where like, I can't, I couldn't remember what happened before watching the highlights. Uh, but it was a wet qualifying. Alonso sticking on P2. Very, very good qualifying. One of the best of the year. Uh, always love to see a wet quali. Uh, then in the race, um, Leclerc obviously starting from the back, kind of ruined that championship fight. That was going to be another weekend that Ferrari were pretty decent at. He had to start from the back, had to come through the field. It was fun to watch him come through the field though. Some good overtakes and battles in the midfield as well. And then a late safety car because Sonoda crashed into the wall and then it was very very intense the highlights don't do it justice you know the highlights only really show the best moments whereas if you are actually watching the race you'll remember that it was very intense for those last laps wanting signs to get past the step and can he do it can he do it um so yeah for me i don't think it was on the same level as a weekend as a monaco a spain a saudi arabia bahrain didn't really have those like standout moments those standout battles um but for me it was a solid b and i think it has to go above emila i think emila overalls the weekend with the sprint was good but um yeah i think i think canada just with the qualifying and with that ending with signs just was a bit more intense than emila so for me it's a good grand prix and i'm gonna put it above emila all right one of the best races of the year the british grand prix i mean look the grand prix weekend as a whole was fantastic qualifying into weather we had signs first ever pole position a fight all the way down to the very last lap latifi making it through to q3 as well uh and then in the race i mean look opening lap we had the uh, insane joe crash you know it's, it's not not that it's something fun to watch it is obviously adds to the element of the weekend the fact that someone can crash like that and have no injuries it's absolutely fucking insane we then had the restart um signs and max good battle uh signs making his little mistake max getting past max getting damage the claire coming through on the uh, with, with his end plate damage it, good battles in the midfield ocon breaking down on the side of the straight safety car restart they, Ferrari absolutely throwing the strategy. Then the absolute chaos that happened behind. The through goes Hamilton moment. Sainz winning his first ever race in form of the one. It was nuts. What a top tier race. You cannot put it. Can, you cannot not put it in S. Absolutely one of the best races we've seen in Formula 1. Best races in the last 10 years. And one of the best races of the year as well. So for me, Austria right before the halfway point of the season. Actually, I actually like this Grand Prix. Qualifying was... Eh, all right, I guess. Um, sprint was good. Uh, again, all, all the sprints were pretty good this year. And then, yeah, in the race, uh, we had some good moments. It was one of those races where it kind of... the One of the only races in the year where it was swapped, where Rebel had the uh, the worst attire deck, Ferrari had the better race pace, and Red Bull had the better qualifier. It was so weird. It was so weird. But yeah, it was it was it wasn't that great. Let's be real. You know, there was there was a midpoint of the race where not much happened. But yeah, some good midfield battles. Good to see the Claire get past Max um, on track. But 
all three of the overtakes were easy done. Like, it was a nice overtakes from Leclerc, but there were just one corner overtakes and done. Uh, we obviously had the drama in, in Sainz's engine breaking down, and then that, that last, like, 10 to 15 laps where Leclerc was having issues with his throttle, and he had to nurse the car home. So, yeah, for me... I think it was good, but I just don't think it's on the same par as a Monaco or a Spain. Like, Monaco and Spain had more drama, more strategy, more battles, more overtakes. Um, so for me, I'm going to have to put it in B, but I do think it was better than Canada. Uh, I think the qualifying for Canada was better, but I think the sprint was good at Austria. And I think we just saw a bit more battles and a bit more overtakes than at Canada. So yeah, for me, top of B. Good, good weekend. Good weekend. Good Grand Prix. Good Grand Prix. Okay, French Grand Prix, just over the halfway point of the season. It was a good race, you know. I had a, it had a bit of everything. Qualifying wasn't too bad uh, to start off with. And then, yeah, uh, in the race, we had the nice little like battle between uh, Max and Leclerc there for a little bit. Leclerc with the drama crashing into the wall. You know, very, very uh, pivotal moment, I guess, for the season, you could say. Then, yeah, then we had some nice battles in the midfield. Signs coming through the field some good drama with signs of Perez as well and then same with George Russell and Perez a good ending for for Perez and Russell battling all the way to the end um yeah it was a good race it was a good race and unfortunately there was no race for the lead though uh, after like 10 laps but yeah I, I think it was good I, it's just I don't know where to put a lot of these Grand Prix there's a lot of races that were good but not great like these ones uh, these four specifically, obviously Australia's moved up because it was a Grand Prix that I attended. But these four are just like, they're solid races. Like, they weren't bad, they weren't boring like Azerbaijan, but they weren't uh, they weren't great. Um, so I don't know where to, how to order these. Like, I'm trying to remember, like, I just all these four are just like the same Grand Prix to me. I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to say it's just a little bit better than the Canadian Grand Prix. They were, they were similar. Um, the last 15 laps of Canada were, were, were elite, but I think overall the French Grand Prix had a bit more strategy, a bit more overtaking, a little bit more drama. Um, so I'm going to say I enjoyed it more than Canada, but I'm going to say it's not as good as Austria just because Austria had a bit more overtake in the midfield. Um, the drama of the signs, the player breaking down, or, or Almost breaking down at the end um yeah i don't leave it like that these four are so hard to rate though but yeah i'm gonna go with that i'm gonna go with that 13 round number 13 of the season um yeah great weekend great weekend uh russell sticking her on pole uh, unexpected pole as well we had lewis and max having his issues Perez going out in q2 yeah a bit of a drama field qualifying then going to the race we had so many storylines we had george russell can he win his first ever race we had the ferraris can they redeem themselves after a shitty french grand prix we had max and Perez needed to come through the field yeah and i mean what a grand prix it was i mean hamilton and, and max just had insane fucking pay yeah, it was just a really, really good Grand Prix. Hungary produces some nice battling as well. We had the drama, or not necessarily drama, but like disappointment with Ferrari's strategy. We had Max doing his little spin as well, um, which kept it a little bit entertaining there. Then at the end, it was a bit intense because could Lewis, with his fresh tires, catch Max? It was, it was unlikely, but it was definitely possible. Um, it was a little bit, uh, what's the word? Uh, maybe like half glass empty approach, like bittersweet in the sense of like we had such a good qualifying such a good grid and the race didn't really live up to what it could have been like that could have been an s tier grand prix but for me it's still a solid a very very solid weekend um i, I think i'm gonna put it above monaco i think obviously the overtaking and the and the battles that we got and the fact that we had six drivers kind of fighting it out makes it better than monaco even though monaco was solid and i'd say it's better than spain as well it's a bit of a similar grand prix to spain in the sense of chaos ferrari throwing battles through the field but there was more battles there was more people involved at at hungary so for me the belgian grand prix it was pretty rough you know qualifying was pretty bad there was it didn't feel like anyone was fighting for pole because max was taking the grid pen signs of perez didn't have the pace um uh, max qualified on pole by seven tenths but he wasn't even going to start pole so qualifying was weird then we got into the race and it was um uh yeah i mean the drama with lewis and lewis and max at the start uh, sorry, sorry, Lewis and Alonso at the start. Um, it was entertaining to watch Max come through the field, but it only lasted, uh, what, like, 12 laps. Um, and then by the 18th lap, he was already leading the Grand Prix. Then we had a couple of battles in the midfield, but most overtakes were just done before the end of the straight. And then, yeah, the... the f the kind of like funniness with Ferrari at the end of the race. But other than that, it was, it was pretty stale. Uh, it was pretty stale. And yeah, I think I'm going to have to put this in D. I think I'm going to have to put this in D. Was it better than Miami? Oh, yeah. I think just purely off of the fact that there's more going on during the Belgium race makes it just a little bit better than Miami. If it wasn't for the fa fact that Miami was a fresh Grand Prix, it, it probably wouldn't, you know wouldn't be in the conversation so yeah i think i'm gonna put belgium i think i'm gonna put belgium in, in, in d but above miami 
You know what? All right, I need to change it. I need to change this because I fucked up. All right, we're moving Azerbaijan down to D. We're moving Australia, Emila, Canada, France, Austria down to C. We're going to move Spain and Monaco down to B. And then we're going to put Netherlands in B. And I'm going to put Netherlands. I'm going to put Netherlands above... Ooh, Netherlands. I'm going to put Netherlands above Monaco. I think it had some more racing, some more drama, um, some more battles than, than Monaco had. Although I like Monaco for different reasons than, than, than Netherlands. I, I feel like average is a bad, is a bad, um, is a bad, you know, get rid of that rating. It's just C. You know what I mean? We just, we, we just get rid of those. You know what I mean? Great. Yeah, that's good. That's a good way to do it. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. That, that, I like that. I like that. Great. Very good. Good. Because I don't, I don't think these were bad. You know what I mean? I don't think these were bad. I, I think there's a thing with Formula 1. I think that's what makes this tier list hard, right? Is in Formula 1 at the moment, other than these, these D tier ones, I don't think we get a bad race. So calling this, calling this, um, calling this tier average, it's just, it's, it's disrespect to this tier, right? Anyways. Coming back to um, Netherlands, the Grand Prix up to. I think Netherlands was really, really good. Uh, qualifying was really, really intense with how tight it was. The race, again, we had the Mercs fighting for the win. The, there was like 30 laps where I was expecting the, the Mercs to win. We had uh, the late safety cars, uh, which threw some, some drama in there. Um, it sucks that Max got past uh, Lewis straight away. Otherwise, we could have had a good battle at the end. Um, but yeah, it, it, I think it was a very solid Grand Prix. Yeah, I think it was just a little bit better than Monaco, but for different reasons. Monaco was just a, such a high level Grand Prix. It sucks we didn't get any overtakes, but it's still super intense. So, uh, so the Italian Grand Prix for me, um, I'm not going to lie from a race standpoint, like racing standpoint. I think it was, it was a D race. Um, but I am going to put it in C for multiple reasons. One qualifying was pretty good. Surprisingly at, at, at Monza. Um, we then had four drivers taking grid pens, which put them down the order of the grid, which kind of gave us some overtaking, which was a bit fun to watch. There was also about 25-ish laps, 30-ish laps, where there was hope that Leclerc and Max were going to battle at the end. So, you know, some people like to look at Grand Prix and go, oh, this is boring because this is what happened. But they forget how they were feeling in the moment. And for 30 laps, I was thinking Leclerc could win. We could see a Leclerc versus Max battle. And then, yeah, obviously, we we're very anticlimactic ending at the end with the safety car, but it was obviously a bit exciting. There was hope there. But the reason why, for me, it goes up to C is because De Vries. It was so fun to watch De Vries beat the Tifi in qualifying on the Saturday and then in the race outperform the Tifi and get for his first points in Formula 1. It was so fun to watch. So for me, I've got to put it in C. Um, you know, I'll put it above Australia. Again, I've only got Australia up here because of I actually attended the Grand Prix. All right, so Singapore, really, really good qualifying. Very tight between Luis Perez and Leclerc. Max, obviously, with that drama at the end of qualifying as well. Then going into the race, uh, it wasn't our delay, but we finally got going. Perez getting past Leclerc at the start, the wet conditions. Then we had the safety car restart. Yeah, it was great having to watch multiple drivers come the field some good battles some drama we then had sonoda bring out the safety car when it converted over to dry then we had the clear the intensity i think the highlights don't do it justice Rem remembering the intensity of how close the clear was to perez the entire race then when it was dry as well the clear kept going at it going at it going at it until he eventually made a mistake and, and then dropped off at the back of perez we had verstappen making a few mistakes hamilton making a few mistakes russell making a few mistakes overall it was a really really intense grand prix um so yeah for me i'm gonna have to put it in very good. I, I don't think it was as entertaining, as dramatic, as good as these three, but I think it was on this level of like great Grand Prix, solid racing. The reason why I'm going to put it above Spain, Netherlands, and Monaco though is just the qualifying. The qualifying was really, really good. And I think with it being a street circuit in the wet, it was just a bit more intense than, than Spain and Netherlands. So yeah, I think I'm going to put it very good um, above Spain and Netherlands. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Japanese Grand Prix. I thought it was a fantastic uh, weekend. I don't know, just the vibes being back at Japan. The track is, is awesome. We had the drama with the wet on Sunday. Yes, the red flag kind of sucked. But the racing after the wet flag was 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 awesome, and yeah, I I think also the champion the the stuff after the race with the whole championship um, fumble was a bit funny to watch. The battling between Ocon and Hamilton, seeing Vettel and Latifi move their way up the 
grid, all the pit stops from the from the wet tire over to the inter. And then we also saw, saw some other drivers like Alonso pit again for fresh inters and make up a lot of strides. Yeah, a lot of talking points throughout the weekend. I thought it was a very, very solid, enjoyable weekend. So for me, I'm going to put in an A. And, oh, I don't know. Was it better than Hungary? Like, Hungary had the pole position for, for Russell and then a pretty good race. Um, but I felt like the wet, I feel like, okay, put it this way. The 40 minutes of racing we got at Japan was top tier, but it was only 40 minutes at the end of the day. So if I'm rating just the 40 minutes that we had, I'm going to say it's better than Hungary, but considering we only got 40 minutes of racing, you know, the qualifying and the race of Hungary was probably better. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to base it off of what we did get. And I personally really, really love the Japanese Grand Prix weekend. Just a little bit more than Hungary. The United States was, was fucking fantastic. Qualifying on the Saturday was awesome. Seeing Sainz get pole. How tight it was between Max, the Claire, and Sainz the entire weekend. Going into the race, Sainz unfortunately getting taken out. Some great battles in the midfield. Uh, was it one or two safety cars? I think it was... No, it would have been, it would, yeah, two safety cars because Bottas and then the restart, the crazy crash of Alonso. Seeing just the midfield constantly swapping different strategies playing out for different teams. Some going med hard, some going hard to med. Um, seeing Alonso come back through the field. And then most importantly, Max, unfortunately, having that very, very big hold up in the pit lane. And then Lewis, so far out in front, um, leading the race. Max and Leclerc had a little battle for a few laps. Max then had to work on catching Lewis those last... 25 laps i think it was was so intense i loved it such a good race just a consistently good race throughout um and then qualifying as well was fantastic so for me i'm gonna put it on s i do feel like the race itself was on par with saudi and bahrain but it just had a little bit more happening in the midfield a little bit more um a little bit more overtaking a little bit more strategy although you could argue the drama was maybe about the same level but yeah i think it was top three race of the year so i'm gonna put it on s but i don't think it was as good as silverstone all right Mexico City Grand Prix. Qualifying. Better than I thought, but still one of the worst of qualifyings of the year. Just nothing really notable happening. It was cool to, to see um, Merck potentially beating Max, but we kind of all knew that, that that was Max's pole to win. And then, unfortunately, uh, Lewis not having the pace and, and Russell fucking up his last lap meant uh, it was an easy pole for Max in the end. Then, in the race, literally nothing. Nothing happened. First lap, nothing happened. There was like zero strategy during the race the only strategy that i can remember was um was lewis uh was it both mercedes going on the harder compound tire to try and catch max but they sucked on the harder compound tire so after like five laps we realized that's not going to happen so that hope was gone uh the best and only part of the grand prix was was ricardo taking out sonoda unfortunately um and then getting that 10 second pen and having to pull through the field which was which was fun to watch but other than that it was it was just it was just such a bad grand prix and for that reason it is a hundred percent going in d tier and for me it's going to be below miami i do think qualifying was better at mexico but with it being a fresh track with having a few moments, I've got to put it above Mexico because Mexico, nothing happened at all. The vibes were good at Mexico, but other than that, Mexico was just so, eh, it was so, so bad. All right, Sao Paulo Grand Prix. What a goated weekend. We started off on Friday with qualifying as it was a sprint weekend. Fantastic qualifying. One of the best race, if not, uh, one, sorry, one of the best qualifying, if not the best qualifying of the year. We had the changing weather, uh, obviously with it being a short track as well qualifying was already tight as it was then the end of q3 we had russell throwing it off track and magnuson setting the best lap it then started raining he got pole position love it new pole sitter in form of the one in a fucking harsh love to see it it was fucking amazing we then go into the sprint and i was a bit wary of the sprint i was like oh no i hate i don't like sprint formats uh you know this is going to be a bit shitty you know it's just really going to even out the grid for sunday and then boom sprint best sprint of the year i think the best sprint we've had in formula one as well if i'm not mistaken um honestly that sprint alone those 25 laps or whatever it was was one of the best races of the year probably like top five top six races of the year um it was so good um so many overtakes so many battles russell topping the sprint some good drama in there as well uh and then the race um the race as well was was one of the best races of the year we we had uh, russell leading lewis um chasing him down oh no sorry the first lap um the first few laps we had ricardo obviously take out magnuson 
bring out the safety car, the drama with that. Then after the safety car restart, Max and Lewis's incident, which sent uh, Max to the back, Lewis down the grid, Lando taking out Leclerc, which sent uh, Leclerc down the back of the grid. We then got to watch those three come through the field. They both, that all three of them did really, really well. Um, they had Perez and Sainz doing some overtakes and battling. We had Russell out in front. Um, doing really really well so many battles that race so many overtakes then we had the late safety car because of lando breaking down and we got to see russell's third stint fucking nuts to hold off the hamilton the way he did hamilton chasing him down then uh again more overtakes from leclerc perez dropping through the field then we had the drama at the end um perez not letting Oh, sorry, Perez letting Max through to try catch the guys in front. They're not happening. They should have inverted positions. They didn't. The whole drama and fallout from that after the race. It was such a good race. For me, it's, I mean, look, no doubt about it. Straight up to S. All right, Abu Dhabi. Final race of the season. I came in with no expectations. I was thinking, hmm. This could even be terrible. This could be great. Uh, or this could be amazing with the new cars. Well, obviously, that was the first time I've with the new cars. I mean, first time every track with the new cars. But, but a lot of people were like, oh, IBW is going to be bad. And it was better. It was better than I thought. Qualifying wasn't that great. Um, uh, you know, we had a few good performances. And then coming in the race, um, yeah, there was, there was some good moments in the race. Uh, when, when you think about it, you know, like uh, Lewis and Sainz on lap one. Lewis, you know, coming back through the field and dropping back through the field and then coming back through the field and then retiring. Alonso retiring as well. Some nice battles. Some nice battles. But kind of like Mexico, a lot of the overtakes were just done before. A lot of the overtakes were just done before the end of the straight. But yeah, then there was uh, obviously watching Vettel do well and then watching him drop through the field. Um, but I think the, the best part of the Grand Prix was uh, the Perez versus the Claire battle. You know, they were fighting for P2 in the championship. Uh, uh, Perez on a different strategy, needing to come through the field, uh, making a mistake, getting held up as well. Um, that was a fun ending all the way to the end. Uh, Max just putting on an absolute domination. But yeah, other than that, some good overtakes, some decent battles. Um, but it, it wasn't that great. Uh, so I think I'm happy to put this in C. It was very similar to like these Grand Prix. Like some good moments, some good battles, some good overtaking. But there was just a lot of laps where like nothing really happened. But I'm trying to think where I put it. I think it was better than Australia. Yes, definitely better than Australia. Italy as well. I mean, Italy, Italy didn't really have much going on. I'm going to say it's better than Italy. You know, I'm going to leave Abu Dhabi there. These four Grand Prix were very similar. You know, I'll, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there, I think. So that wraps up my tier list for the Grand Prix, my rankings for the Grand Prix in 2022. We ended Brazil, best Grand Prix of the year with uh, Britain and the United States, also in S tier, definitely the best three of the year. Then A tier, very solid races, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, two very similar Grand Prix, good battles, good overtaking, good drama. First race of the year, very, very exciting. Then Japan and Hungary, some great battles, some great moments, great qualifying in Hungary as well. Then B tier, very, very good. Again, you saw me halfway through this tier list. I changed it. It was initially great, good, average, but I felt like in comparison to 2020 and 2019, there wasn't as many average or bad Grand Prix. These, all the ones in C were good. So B ended up becoming very good. Grand Prix, they just weren't on the same level as A tier, but were still very solid. Some great moments, some great racing, maybe just not as much battling and overtaking throughout. Only four Grand Prix in D tier. To think 22 races this year, Grand Prix this year, and only four of them I would consider boring or not that great to watch. Uh, overall, a great season. I think a lot of people are going to compare this season to 2021, but I would argue, I would argue, 2022 had more battles and overtakes than 2021. If we had have taken everything from 2021 season and just taken just the overtakes and battles from 2022, that could be the best season ever. So, you know, I, I will say 2022 did have something better than 2021. And I hope heading into 2023, if we get Mercedes in the mix, Ferrari stop fucking about, we have a three-way fight with the same kind of... Um, season that we had this year it would be very 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 good so i'm looking forward to that but looking at the viewer tier list uh we had all of you guys throughout multiple streams rating on the tier list what you guys thought um you only had a couple in d which was surprising um you had a fair few in in average um a few in b a lot in a i was i'm i'm surprised i mean look you guys are thinking positively that's great that's great but i cannot believe that united states Bahrain and Saudi Arabia is on the same tier as Canada and Austria. That, that's insane to me. But hey, you guys, you guys voted. Um, 
uh, I'm glad you enjoyed that many Grand Prix. And then Brazil and Britain by themselves up in S tier. I can take